Hi, I'm Jamie, and today I'm just going to take you through a brief tutorial regarding Suryantrasana, also known as Sundial Pose, and sometimes called Compass Pose. So this is a pose that has a lot of elements to it, a lot of side body opening, a lot of shoulder opening, a lot of hip and hamstring opening. So it isn't actually the kind of pose I would recommend just jumping into. It's a good idea to make sure that you're pretty warmed up. I actually have a video a uh, flow class aimed at side body stretching where we work toward this pose. If you're going to do this pose on your own, some things that I do recommend doing is uh, is to make sure that, you, again, like I said, shoulders are nice and open. So doing things like this, opening up your shoulders, making sure that you've got some side body opening that's happened, um, and as well as hip and hamstring opening. So things like um, side angle pose is a really great way to open the hips and really work that external rotation of the leg that we're gonna want in sundial pose. Um, triangle pose, also good, has the same thing. External rotation will also help to open your hamstrings. Some forward folding, or even things like uh, Parsvottanasana, Hanumanasana, Lizard pose. Uh, again, these are just a few few tidbits that I would I would strongly suggest before jumping into a pose like this. So as far as it goes, we'll we'll do both sides. Um, we'll start on the left side. Bring your right heel in as if you were going to sit cross-legged. Okay, from here, take your <laughs> left foot and pick it up, and just start by by aiming your your left heel and making it in line with your knee. Okay, one of the things that tends to happen. Uh, as soon as we're in seated poses, the hips tend to roll back and the core collapses. So roll your hips forward, pull your belly in, and lift up through the back line of your body. And actually, a good little precursor to actually coming into full sundial is heron pose. So you might play here just with opening up the back of your knee, letting your hamstring get some space. Use the grip on your foot to pull your thigh bone straight back and lift your chest. You might spend a few breaths here, again, just being patient, letting that, that hamstring get some space. And then take your, your knee and bring it wider than your rib cage. And work here to pull your knee back as you bring your chest forward. So this is, is not unlike lizard pose, especially when you bring your, your left arm inside your leg and press your knee and shoulder into one another. Okay, this might be the place that you work if it's possible. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier if you can actually sling your knee over the back of your shoulder. You still need to work squeezing your knee in, but now you actually have your leg hooked on something so it's a little bit easier to sustain. Okay, from there, your left hand comes out a little bit wider. You can either be on your palm. I like fingertips, personally. And then you switch the grip. So now your right hand's gonna hold your, the pinky toe edge of your foot. Now here's where the external rotation is really important. People often get really, really eager to just uh, straighten the leg. But you actually get a lot more mobility in your hamstring if you can find the external rotation first. So that's a big scoop of your left sitting bone. And think rolling your left hip crease down toward your yoga mat. So your inner left thigh is spiraling up toward your nose. Okay, once you have that, again, not just pulling the heel back with the strength of your arm, but really pressing the back of your thigh against your arm and using that as the leverage to begin to take your heel back. Okay, from there, press down into your right sitting bone. Pull your foot against your hand to create the side body length in your right side waist. And you look over to the right. Okay, and then you can let that side go and we'll We'll do the other side as well. So again, remembering you've done a good warm up at this point before you're actually jumping into this, this pretty big pose. Okay, so pick up your right heel, roll the top of your hips forward so you feel the presence of an inward curve in your lumbar spine. And the weight is closer to, to your sitting bones, not necessarily closer to your sitting bones, but sort of hovering between your sitting bones and your sacrum. You're not just sitting on the back of your pelvis. Okay, so we've got lots of core integrity here. Pull your navel in and up. Take the head of your arm bones back. Lift through the sides of your neck. And then from here, let's take heron. So just starting to open the back of your knee without losing what you've established in terms of the grounding of your hips, the strength of your core, and the lift of your spine. And you can use the grip on your foot again to pull your thigh bone straight back into your hip socket. Lift the sides of your chest. Relax the top of your shoulders. Yeah, and then from there, re-bend your knee. Take your knee wide of your rib cage, pulling straight back, and then bring your, 
your right arm inside of your leg, and again, just like a, a lizard pose. Squeeze your knee against your shoulder, possibly even whoo, lift your, your knee right over the back of your shoulder, the back of your knee right over your shoulder. And then take your right hand off to the side and then switch the grip so your left hand holds the pinky toe edge of your foot. So again, not going anywhere fast here. Scoop your right sitting bone. Spiral your inner right thigh up toward your nose, your outer right hip down toward your mat. So you can see that shift, right? My, my whole foot came across the midline of my body just from that rotation in the hip. Okay, so find that first. And then as you stabilize your bottom arm, Press the back of your thigh against your arm and use that to yawn the back of your knee. Open any amount. Be very patient with your hamstring. For a lot of us, it takes a long time before the leg gets fully straight. So just make sure that you're working the alignment first and foremost, and then just patiently waiting for the mobility to arrive, which will happen much faster if you're really focused on the alignment. Ground through your left sitting bone and then push your foot into your left hand to create that, that length. That lovely length in the left side of your body. And then you can let that go. From there, you might want to take your feet out a little wider and windshield wipe your knees a few times. It's a lot of flexion and tension for the, the hip flexors. So after doing it, you might want to do something like a low lunge just to Stretch out the front of your thighs. Do that on both sides. These are just my offerings of, of how to counter stretch that pose. Okay, maybe even just coming into a Virasana. But again, remember, when it comes to doing your Surya Yantrasana, your sundial or compass pose, um, shoulders need to be warmed up. Hips need to be warmed up, hamstrings need to be warmed up, and side body lengthening. So again, not the kind of pose you just jump into. Make sure you do some sort of practice before trying it. But uh, good luck and have fun. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. Again, I'm Jamie here at Why Yoga at Home. Namaste.